Hi guys, if you like this video, please smash that like button. Click subscribe because that really helps us bring you more videos. And don't forget to click the bell and you'll get notified of our latest videos or otherwise you might miss them. Thanks for watching, we appreciate you. If your campers are rocking, maybe because you're not stabilized. Okay, so today, on today's episode, we are gonna talk about not so much leveling, but stabilizing. So we're gonna focus on three vehicles or three RVs. So one is our own uh, gas class A motor coach. So we're not gonna use a diesel pusher. Diesel pushers generally use airbag systems. They level and stabilize in a completely different way. And we're just gonna focus on a four point leveling stabilization system on a class A motor coach a six point leveling stabilization system on a fifth wheel and a standard stabilization that system that you would see on a travel trailer. So less about the leveling aspect of it and more just about how do we get these things stable so when we're parked somewhere or at the campground for the weekend, um, when some people with small dogs, especially small dogs will, will understand this, when you're sitting in the front of your RV, the Fido's in the back and all of a sudden they run well they take these small little quick steps and I don't know why but those little dogs can get that whole camper bouncing up and down <laughs> as they run across it and if you felt it before you know exactly what I'm talking about but um, we're going to look at a couple different ways um, of how these these rigs get stabilized and what could cause them to be unstable and maybe and we'll touch on some points on travel trailers that we see our customers doing it wrong a lot. And I, it's more just an education thing to, to maybe do it right. So first let's talk about uh, the Class A motor coach. So this one here uses an equalizer system. So our coach has four leveling jacks. So when we get to a site, um, we have an auto level function. To be honest though, we don't use it. We don't generally recommend the auto leveling function because of the fact that when you hit auto level on especially the equalizer system, Lippert is similar, that the jacks will travel a certain amount whether they need to travel that far or not. So say they only need to go down four inches before they hit the ground. And what they end up doing is going six to eight inches before they stop and then the next set of jacks take over and raise it up and then it starts its balancing act. And it's got a predetermined set from the manufacturer. So when they had the rig in the factory, they set a predetermined level and that is level. So then what it is, there's a little board or box that talks to the controller and tells your rig that it's level. So level doesn't exactly mean stabilization. So the reason we're gonna talk about our rig today is we are in our Florida location for the winter, taking care of our customers down here in Bushnell, Florida. So we are on a pad, which is great. Drew, you're on a pad. You must have it made in the shade, but we don't. So this pad has a steep grade to it for a RV. So not necessarily for parking, it's nice for water runoff, but on a 40 foot class A motor coach, we're, pre we're pretty steep going backwards. So what's happening to us right now is the rear end, the jacks are really extended. So what that does when the jacks get so high, we get kind of a sway, they're just too far. So we've actually put blocks under our snap pads or our jacks so we could try to minimize some of that travel on our jack. So we don't have as much of the internal jack shaft come out of there we're trying to minimize some of that to minimize some sway. But now what we have going on is the frame is super long on an F53 chassis, especially for our rig. So what we get is we get some bounce. So now we have a little bit of sway and a little bit of bounce. So what we're gonna do on our rig, because we are more stationary for the winter months here, we are gonna take some simple A-frame jacks and some cinder blocks, and we're gonna put them in a couple points under the frame. And all we're gonna do is snug these, these little A-frame jacks just up to the bottom of the frame. And just to get rid of some of that bounce and to help us with a little bit of that sway because of the grade we're sitting on. So we'll show you a little bit of how we do that. We'll show you all four because 
after one, really, it's kind of boring. But it is going to help us a lot. So we haven't done it yet. We've been putting up with this for a couple of weeks now just so we could show you all what we're going to do. But this exact same thing we're going to do today, you could also do with your rig. This is what we're going to use today to help give some stabilization to our Class A. So uh, we'll do an unboxing of this. We'll show you what these come with. You can buy this kit on the Jungle website. And so what we're going to end up doing is we're going to put a couple of these jacks roughly, I would say if we're looking over here, in the middle. So halfway between the front leveling, leveling jacks and the rear. So the front ones are right behind the front wheels and the other set of jacks is right behind the rear axle. So what we're going to do is we're going to put two jacks up in the front area and then I'm going to try to put two jacks as far back on the frame as I can. So we have also four cinder blocks. So we got the cinder blocks from the uh, local hardware store. You know, you can go to Home Depot, Lowe's, Menards if that's in your area, your choice. So, but the jacks we got from Amazon, um, they used to sell these on, uh, at, at Wally World and some other places, but we've been having trouble finding them. So we ordered them from, from Amazon. So let's unbox and see what they give us here. All right, so that was a quick unboxing. So what you get is you get four levelers and they're all threaded with that handy dandy handle and then you're going to get four ooh, these are nice four rubber pads so the rubber pads obviously go on the end of the jack just to give a little cushion between there so you're going to have the metal hitting the metal of the of the frame rail they give you these uh roger rabbit gloves don't know what you're going to do with those, but then you get a jack. So I'll show you how we set this up real quick. Take the sleeve off, and all you're doing here is you see this, this bolt, and you're going to put it, it'll sit down. If you can see there's like a impression of that bolt in there. So that just sits down in there like that, and then you can turn this up however you need to turn it up. So. And then when we get under there, we'll take our block. We're either going to lay our block horizontal or vertical. So we'll figure that out when we get under there. But that's pretty much the whole setup of the jack. Pretty easy. So here are your beautiful stabilization jacks. I don't remember how much they are, but the link's below. Click on that link. It's an affiliate link also. So if you buy it through our store, we get a tiny little vig on the, uh, the price there, which helps us a lot make these videos. I was just thinking that you guys see me laying down on the job a lot. So what we're doing here is we have to make sure that our jack gets into position here. So what we're doing is we're going to center our cinder block and we want to get the, the jack straight under that and all we're doing is we're just getting this snug enough to where it takes the pressure off because all we're trying to do here is just eliminate a little bit of bounce so we're not trying to raise the coach with this because i mean let's face it folks this ain't raising the coach and all we're trying to do is just get a little bit of that bouncy bounce out of this so you know if your campers are rocking it's not necessarily the washing machine it could be because you're not stabilized so that's really it. So we have the block. We know our, we have our height difference here. We just snug this down just enough. You can give a little pull on it. You're not trying to push up because, let's face it, you're, you're just going to damage this or you're going to damage this block. You're not going to damage the frame of this chassis. But if you were using a jack that had, you know, tonnage to it, you could. You could definitely hurt your frame. Um, so... The only thing we're doing is snugging this, and that is it. No more than that. No more, no less. And uh, what we're going to do is, originally we were thinking we might go to the back behind the axle on this rig, but now in looking at it, we're actually going to, even though I position this here for just demonstration, I'm actually going to go up probably about another 
maybe eight feet. I'm going to go forward on both sides and reposition this. And then I'm going to come back here and I'm going to position these right in front of the axle, the other two. And then we're going to test it. You know, it's all trial and error. So if it's not working quite like we want it to there, then we'll move it to another spot. And I can give these new uh, Mickey Mouse gloves a workout since we're in Florida. You know, we're not too far from Orlando. So the next one we're going to talk about is a fifth wheel and how that one stabilizes. So let's go over and look at a fifth wheel. Okay, so now that we've shown you how we stabilize the Class A gasser, um, so now let's talk a little bit about stabilization on a fifth wheel. So from my opinion, I believe that fifth wheels with six point leveling, they're really ones you don't have to do a whole lot of extra sauce to it to get it to stabilize and not bounce as much. So when we're talking about stabilizing on this with the six point leveling system, each side has three jacks. So you have two jacks in the front, that act as how you uh, connect to your fifth wheel pin box and also you but you also have a center jack in the middle of this which eliminates that bounce you might get but also helps control some of that sway you may feel so this pad this is in the same park we're in so this pad also has a steeper grade to it again great for water flow but not so great for our rig so very low in the front, which keeps the shaft on your front leveler or stabilizer at a short throw, but the back is very highly extended. So the rear of this could get some uh, extra sway in the living area, but because of the center jacks on this or stabilizers slash levelers, this actually eliminates some of that. So really with this one, you're pretty much you know set and go you, you don't get a lot of that that sway you're you're it helps you get level pretty quickly again we still recommend manually leveling and when you talk about manual leveling we mean you take like a three foot level set it in the middle of the floor and then you level your coach out by using that level we recommend doing it that way so you can minimize your travel on your jacks you want to keep those jacks the least amount of extension as possible so um, as we're standing here just now, something else I we can touch base on real quick is um, it's a type of friction or stiction as you might hear it called. And it happens when these jacks are on concrete like the center one here is, and it has no give to it. So the front is on a snap pad and this particular customer has not put their snap pads on their center uh, jack yet. So what happens is, is when it's got that hard friction and when the camper tends to move a little bit, you may hear a popping noise. That popping noise is generally from stiction is what Lipper calls it, stiction, but it's really a friction. So there's a friction going on and it's like moving that jack up and a really what they call a micro adjustment and it makes a small popping noise. So a lot of ways you can get rid of that is put a rubber pad under there, maybe use a product like snap pads. Um, but, or generally that's the best way, but there's also some anti-friction additive you could get from your local auto parts store. You can add that into your hydraulic reservoir, run your jacks in and out a few times to mix that in, and that can help with some of that stiction or friction um, that you may hear if your system is doing some popping. So the only reason I brought that up in this stabilization video is because, you know, we just heard it while we were here. So maybe a later video, we'll talk more about stiction. But for now, that is basically what you're looking at on a fifth wheel. You have a six point leveling, especially on most of your newer fifth wheels. Some of the older ones do have four point or only have front level or front leveling, not even leveling, it's just raising up and down, but they may have adjustable jacks. So you can get a little bit of level out of that, but you're gonna have to use blocks under the rear tire and speaking of blocks, we're going to go to camper number three and we'll talk about that one now. Okay, so the last one we're going to talk about today is a travel trailer. So travel trailers do not have hydraulic leveling generally. There are some travel trailers on the market that have what they would classify as a leveling uh, electric system. Lippert makes one for travel trailers. This particular one is not. And if you do not have 
an electric leveling system on your travel trailer, do not attempt to level your travel trailer with the jacks. All you're gonna end up doing is breaking your jacks. So one of our biggest calls about travel trailer stabilization issues is, they'll tell us, hey, I leveled my camper and now the thing is swayed, my jack is broke. We get out there, sure enough, they were using this scissor jack that you see here in the front. They were using that to level their camper. So they're cranking that thing up to raise the camper up. They are not designed for that. These scissor jacks on most travel trailers are designed for one thing and one thing only, and that is side to side, side to side stabilization. They're not made to level. They're not made to level back and forth. They are only made to stabilize the camper from rocking back and forth. Do they do a good job? No, not really, but it's better than nothing. So what we did on the Class A at the beginning of the video with the little A-frame jacks, you'll see here this particular client, they actually used A-frame jacks under their slide out. Now, we don't necessarily recommend that because um, what can happen is the travel trailer will settle over time and it could put added stress on that slide out if you're not careful. If you're on top of it and you're constantly checking it and making sure everything is level and you don't have settling, then if you're very diligent, you know, maybe you can get away with it. We don't recommend it, but you know, it's your camper. We tell customers all the time they still tend to do it, but we do know some of our customers that are very diligent about it. They're in good shape but we could probably uh, maybe show you an example of what we mean when the camper levels and it pushes that slide out into a very awkward position, which can do damage to your seals, your trim rails, your inner walls. It, it could open a big can of nightmarish worms that you just don't want to deal with. But how you would get this camper level before you start your stabilization is, if the camper say is pitched to the curbside, so what we would do is you would put blocks, either wood, plastic, however, and you're gonna to wanna to get that camper squared back up straight. So you're gonna level side to side first, okay? So after you use those blocks, the next step would be you would go to your jack and the tongue of your camp, of your travel trailer, and then you're gonna do your front to back leveling. So the front jack is your front to back leveling, and then you use blocks under your wheels on the side that needs to be raised up. So you level first side to side, then front to back. Once you do that, then you would come to your scissor jacks on all four corners and you snug them down. You don't over crank them, you don't try to get a lift. All you're doing is snugging them to either the ground or recommend put some kind of like a, a stackable block or maybe a piece, a chunk, a good sized chunk of wood something cinder block even, put something under there. And again, you wanna to try to minimize the travel on that jack. The lower or tighter you can keep it, the more stable your rig will be side to side. So remember, these don't stabilize you front to back, they only stabilize you side to side. So the only thing that's giving you any stabilization front to back is that jack and the weight of the tongue or the camper weight on it. So. Uh, another thing you could do is take those A-frame jacks, maybe under your rear bumper where the, the frame hits the bumper where it's welded on at the frame point, you could put a couple of those jacks there which may help with some front to back bounce. Um, but generally, your four corner stabilization scissor jacks are what you would use to stabilize a travel trailer. We talked about the fifth wheel, how you have the six point leveling system that center jacks help give you your stabilization there. And on a Class A motor coach, you get your leveling with your four point, but really you need something if you're on a hard pitch or a hard or steep grade to maybe give you a little bit of extra stabilization to get rid of some of that bounce when you have a super long frame. Smaller Class A's won't get as much of that because the jacks are tighter and closer. But when you have a 40 foot long Class A like we have, and we're on a steep grade, we tend to get a lot of bounce or even a little bit of sway. So we're really hopeful that putting the four uh, jacks in like we did today are gonna help us with some of that bounce. We'll keep you posted on that down in the comments. Um, but that's really all we have today. If you have any questions about stabilization, um, you know, put it down there in the comments for us. If you thought this video was helpful, 
Make sure you smash the like button, do a little dance on it. Share this with your friends if you think they need some help with stabilization. Maybe you've seen them you know, doing the old stabilizer under the slide out and they don't pay attention to it anymore and you've been watching it. Share this video with them. Maybe it'll be helpful for them. And if you like videos like this and you'd like to see more of them, please hit the notification bell and click subscribe because it helps us a lot and lets us know you want to see more videos just like this. But until next time, this has been Drew with Mission RV Services, Jen behind the camera, and we'll talk to you next time. Bye, everybody.